Antifa pedo who fucked around and found out. And an eye for an eye might be in the Jew section of the Bible, but it is still in the Bible. What's going on, everybody? I am Winston A. Marshall, aka The Swaggy Blurred, and this is my season four, episode one spoiler review of The Boys entitled Department of Dirty Tricks. Now, if you're new to the channel, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. What am I doing? Take this shit off. <laughs> if you're new to the channel, please be sure to hit the subscribe button uh, and make sure to hit the notification bell so you know whenever I put new content out. And if you like this video when it's all said and done, be sure to hit the like button as well. Um, so, Really quick, um, I would say, if I had to guesstimate here, I'm just trying to think about my my time and the editing and all of that, and my re recap of the first three seasons of The Boys as well as Gen V season one, that whole recap should be up before this, uh, but then this will be up, and then episodes two and three, those dropped as well on the 13th at midnight. Um, I am going to, just because I have a lot going on, including Christian Harloff is officially moving uh, in a day, so tomorrow's my last day to shoot one last Capes and Cows in person and spend some time with them. Uh, I will probably be putting those out either Friday or Saturday, episodes two and three, but if I can get more done, you'll get this a little bit earlier. So all that being said, let's just dive right into it, man. Um, so what I'm gonna do, because it was a lot. This is different than watching X-Men 97 or other stuff where you kind of had, you know, just a half hour. I'm going to just do um, kind of the intro up until we get to the title card, and then I'm going to talk about it via character. Um, so the intro, we actually get Victoria Newman at a campaign rally. Uh, it looks like her... And the, uh, I think Singer is the name of the presidential candidate, are starting to win some states. It looks like most likely this is a primary, but it could actually be the actual election night. Good evening. The bar remains open. And, uh, oh yeah, Colorado and Nevada just went to Robert Singer. But either way, uh, she's at a campaign event. They're getting some results in. Um, the boys uh, have all kind of set up in order to try and get at Victoria. They sneak in. They've got some people working in the Secret Service that let them in. They go up. They put uh, what appears to be some sort of chemical inside of some uh, eyedropper, some like eye drops. They, they sneak into her hotel room to do that. Now, while all of this is going on, one, you have Butcher, who is not well. <laughs> He's, he's talking to himself, he's throwing up still, um, but he is there. They're keeping him at an arm's length because of all the ways that they've been screwed over by him, but he's also not healthy. Homelander shows up with Ryan, and that's its own level of ridiculousness. You get Homelander calling all the humans cockroaches. They're only humans, and toys for, for our amusement. amusement, that's right. And then you have Victoria, whose daughter Zoe is there as well. So just to speed through that, Homelander talks to Victoria, being like, you're going to need to re-up this partnership. Victoria doesn't like that, but she doesn't really have a choice uh, at this particular moment. Butcher tries to convince Ryan to leave with him, and Homelander doesn't actually kill... Excuse me, doesn't actually kill Butcher when he sees him. Instead, he goes, I can see the legions around your brain. You've got, what, six months at best, so too bad we're not going to be able to fight it out together. And Frenchie and Kimiko go to, again, put that chemical in Victoria's thing, only to find out that Zoe... Victoria's daughter has been injected with Kamau V and is now a soup. She's got these weird snake fangs coming out of her face and eats the Secret Service and then attacks Frenchie, but Kimiko is able to save her, which we got to see Kimiko grow a baby arm like Deadpool. Again, you got to love how much they reference other superhero stuff and other pop culture stuff throughout. They escape. Starlight is slowly learning how to fly, but she can't fly for very long. She's able to catch Frenchie. Uh, Kimiko has a very funny moment where she splatters, but she puts her face back together. And then Huey has a run in with Victoria, who's kind of on to them, and he tries to throw acid in her face, and she's not affected. And again, doesn't kill any of them, just kind of puts up with it one way or the other. Okay. So all of that happens, and now let's just go character by character and what they're all going through. You've got uh, Huey, his main storyline as things are going on. He's trying to help run the boys and continue their plan and whatnot. He gets a call from his dad. He doesn't answer it. He eventually finds out that his dad had a stroke. So he races to the hospital to try and be with him and all of that. And ultimately, again, I'm speeding through a lot of this. At the end of the episode, we actually see Huey by his dad's bedside, listening to voicemails, realizing he's been blowing him off and it's terrible, and he turns around and a woman says something and Huey says for what it's worth I think he can 
Mom? So it looks like his mom might be back. And based off of the outfit, we saw a couple of Instagram live stories of this kind of right wing soup, like truther. And I believe it's called, uh, what, like her thing is called the truth with firecrackers, soup firecracker. Based off of the outfit and just from the angle we're at, I think that might be his mom. But I'm not sure. We'll find out, obviously, in the next few episodes. As far as Starlight goes, Starlight has fully joined the boys. She's helping them. But at the same time, she's got the Starlight, uh, Starlight House. And that's where she's helping, uh, you know, at-risk teens uh, through all that kind of stuff and running this foundation. But it really is a war of ideologies between her and Homelander and them being kind of on the opposite sides of this. Feels very a la almost Hillary and Trump a little bit. The way that this is now kind of played out, obviously, with Starlight being a much much younger um that's not to be a slighted hillary but just just honestly you know the the, the truth of the matter of, of you know you got the young midwest girl and then obviously homelander who's kind of taking this whole thing on um she's there for huey she's there for him uh you know with the the whole stroke and everything else she's the one that uh, she's training to fly longer huey was training her with that um but ultimately as uh, we find out later on in the episode that Homelander is found innocent of murder. He's not, he is not convicted. Um, a massive fight breaks out and we'll get to why that happens in a little bit, but Starlight has to go and try and break that up. Her, her uh, main uh, worker that it was, that's part of the Starlight house ends up getting beat the hell out of by Homelander folks. And we're not sure if she's dead or not, but she does not look like she's going to make it. Let's see, MM. MM, we find out that Todd has broken up with Monique and he's very happy about that. Uh, he's now the leader of the boys and he, he uh, reports directly to uh, the CIA and to uh, presidential candidate Singer and essentially like, yo, you guys need to figure out how to get rid of Victoria and all these soups because I would essentially be one heart, she would be, a soup would be one heartbeat away from the presidency, and it's my heartbeat, and they all are aware that she can pop heads and manipulate blood, so they definitely don't want her being, uh, you know, at the, at the White House and all that. So, ultimately, Monique calls and says, hey, um, can, you know, I asked Todd to move out, can you go and find him, though, because our baby girls, you know, really loved him, you know, and all that. And there's a really funny joke about like, man, I don't understand how you, was that why you were with him? Because he was nice to her baby girl? And you know, it couldn't have been his dick. And she just. She won the D. Right? <laughs> and that's brought up a little bit later. He goes on surveillance with Frenchie and Kimiko to try and find Todd. Um, and Frenchie was like, man, the only way that Todd, that, that fucking dork could have been with your girl she, she, he must be packing. He's got to have some like a monster between his legs, and MM really doesn't like that shit, but he puts up with it. Todd must be picking some serious heat between his legs. Some serious Pete Davidson energy over there, no? So, as they're surveilling, they do get photos of Todd, uh, two other Homelanders, and then uh, Homelanders like fans. Um, I don't know what they call themselves. Uh, maybe they're homelanders, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then this black woman, her name is Sage, who we met a little bit earlier. I'll get to that in just a second. Um, then Frenchie. Frenchie obviously is doing everything with Kimiko. Uh, we'll talk about Frenchie and Kimiko. Um, they're obviously working together to try and stop everything as the boys are doing. Um, ultimately, Frenchie goes to visit Starlight, to visit Annie at the Starlight's house. And there's a dude there that he met him in one of the group meetings. We don't know if it's for drugs or alcohol or whatever, but they met in one of those anonymous meetings. And it's clear that Frenchie has feelings for him, but he feels guilty about it. Kimiko can kind of sense something. And ultimately she says, you know, I love you, but this ain't gonna happen. So if he makes you happy, you should be with him, which is actually very interesting. That's not how I thought that was gonna go down or how she was gonna take it, but ultimately she did. Um, so, when we get to the big fight outside the courthouse, uh, pretty much everybody is there except for Huey. So MM and Kimiko and Frenchie are helping break up some of the fights and mainly protect some of the Starlighters. Uh, but Frenchie ends up protecting the guy that he's into. Uh, they share a passionate kiss and then he eventually goes home with him. Uh, he takes a look at the, the guy's photo of his family and places it down which makes me wonder what's kind of going on there um all right so we got frenchy kimiko huey starlight mm okay so let's move over into the vault side of things 
things are kind of business as usual. Um, before I get to Homelander, I mean, you've got the Deep A Train and Ashley and Black Noir is back. We thought he died. Um, the three of them are essentially all just yes men or a yes woman to Homelander. They're trying to put more people in the seven. He's not really... Uh, the Homelander doesn't really like any of the, the, the options one way or the other. Um, there's a really creepy moment where Homelander essentially tells the Deep because he realizes everybody just kowtows to him and just bows to his whim to uh, go down on A-Train. Blow A-Train. What? I'm not kidding. Go over there, pull out A-Train's c and blow him. And it didn't end up happening, but there's they're, they're now being tested constantly by Homelander because he realizes he can toy with them. Ultimately, we get the three of them, so Black Noir, The Deep, and uh, A-Train, at the same meeting place as the Homelander fans and this Sage person, again, who I'll get to in a minute, they all go in this room, and Homelander shows up and goes, Beat these gentlemen to death. <laughs> I think maybe we should go which ultimately Black Noir and the Deep Dew, A-Train doesn't actually swing a bat, but he's there. But then they are given further instructions and A-Train plants the dead bodies outside the courthouse. And then this is being used as a, look, the Starlighters actually murdered three of the other people um, that were there. Violent attacks by Starlight supporters left three innocent patriots dead. Last two people we need to talk about, the first one being Homelander. When we first start seeing him, he's peeing and he finds out that he has a gray pube. And so it ends up in a situation where all of a sudden, with all the yes men around him and realizing that he can do whatever he wants and nobody's really paying him whatever sort of true respect or giving him any pushback and all, all he has all this control, he is starting to lose it. And so, all of the heroes that are recommended, one of them was a black woman named Sister Sage, uh, which you find out she just likes to go by Sage. That was some bullshit that Vought did by giving her the sister <laughs> moniker. Sister Sage. Just Sage. Vought added the sister part. Can't have one of us without a racial qualifier. Preach, sister. But her superpower is that she's the smartest person on the planet by a mile. And when we eventually meet her, her house is full of an endless supply of books. It almost looks like the library from Beauty and the Beast with just infinite books there. And Homelander goes and tries to test her and she calls all sorts of stuff, your prostate's enlarged because you know, clearly you've been washing your hands because you've been peeing more. I can tell that you're getting your hair dyed and you used to get it less, but now it's having more. And you can see Homelander's a little unnerved However, this is what he came for. He wanted somebody that was not going to bow to him, but would push back. And even says at one particular point, you know, you know, you're, you got a lot of balls. And she's like, you're welcome to laser me if you want. That's up to you. So ultimately, Homelander starts to listen to her. And, and like she points out, I can tell that you're not happy, uh, you know, because you got everything you wanted, but it's not, you know, it's not ideal. And so he goes, so what do I do? And she's like, well, I have this hypothetical plan. And if you do it, you let them tear themselves down. Then you get to come in and be the hero, which is very interesting because at times it feels like, you know, again, with the boys taking time to look at the real world and really make comments, <clears throat> excuse me, really make commentary on it. It does feel like sometimes that there are crises made up so that people can fix them, which is kind of ridiculous, but it happens. And again, they're very good at putting that mirror up to society. But Homelander tells Sage, she says, don't call me Sister Sage, just call me Sage. He goes, I want you to join the Seven. And she goes, I'm not wearing some racist ass fucking leotard. I'm a black woman. I'm gonna have to deal with all that bullshit. Um, and he's like, no, I, I want you to do this. I need you to help me execute this plan. So that's when we find out that Sage is the one that has put all of this in motion. She's the one that got the Homelander fans to show up, that their opportunity to meet Homelander. Homelander kept calling the borders when they, with their murder. She was the one that ultimately went to the thing knowing that it was gonna be not guilty. And she yelled, hey, fascist, and threw a hot coffee on a Homelander fan on the opposite side, which started the riot. Not guilty! <laughs> Fuck you, fascist! <laughs> um, she really has put all of this in motion. Fortunately, like I said earlier, M.M. was following Todd and happened to see Todd meeting with Sage and ultimately saw Homelander show up at this place. In the, so they have some evidence that a lot of this was kind of planned and staged and hopefully we'll, they'll be able to use that a little bit later. Finally, the last person, the other main character in the story is Billy Butcher. And again, as I mentioned before, he's been sick. Um, he's been talking to himself. And at one point after we deal with the initial incident at the hotel, 
Uh, that doesn't go very well. He goes and seeks out Victoria Newman to have another talk. Um, they meet at a VOT video, which is hilarious. And we get an awesome little quick cameo I caught or an Easter egg of an old moving starring Polarity. So Polarity is played by Sean Patrick Thomas. Um, and he is a essentially magnetic superhero who we met in Gen V who can't use his powers anymore because it's caused lesions on his brain. And he's having, he's starting to stroke out and stuff like that. So he's done with his powers. He's in a coma as of Gen V. That's that little Easter egg there. That's not the important part. The important part is Victoria and Butcher, they talk. They realize they kind of need a truce and they both need each other because Victoria can't kind of get outside of the grip of Homelander because he's kind of done that and he needs to get rid of Homelander at the same time. So, so Victoria asks Butcher to get the files that Huey has from her at Red River, the uh, orphanage she was at where she was out here murdering people and also the fact that she has these powers in particular. Get that evidence. I will help you out getting rid of Homelander. Ultimately, Butcher goes, does some kind of bullshit and does take the evidence from Huey. But then at the end of the episode, as he's sitting there looking at it and drinking some very nice McKellen, uh, he, the person he's talking to shows up and it turns out to be uh, Becca, his, his deceased wife. I think you're about to fuck over Huey. I had a clean shot at Homelander, game set and fucking match, but I chose to save him. Look where that goes. And so ultimately, when he sends the evidence to Victoria, it's actually just a picture of his ass. <laughs> and so then finally, you know, he sits there being like, all right, I guess I'm not going to go that route. But we see while he's drinking at the end, it looks like a worm is writhing throughout his brain. So it looks like what might be happening in this particular case is a scenario where these hallucinations or maybe this parasite that's inside his brain. I find that very funny only in the sense that I know they couldn't have done this fast enough. Production was already done, but knowing that we've got RFK Jr. in the real world talking about he has brain worms that are now dead, but that were eating his brain. It's fucking weird that they were able to, to, to that, that this kind of matched up uh, since that RFK thing only dropped a couple weeks ago, but hilarious to see that kind of play out and how that, inadvertently ended up being another connection. Um, and then just some of the side stories, you can tell that A-Train's not okay. Black Noir is clearly not the original Black Noir because he can talk. Yo, what the fuck? That was so fucked up, you guys. Kind of tell his stature seemed a little different and we wouldn't have seen him really recover from an injury like he had before, so that's very interesting. And then the Deep is just being bitched around. Um, you know, he pushes back on the allegations from his ex-wife about him having sex with the octopus. Ashley demands that the octopus be gone. Uh, he says that it is. We find out actually that he's kept the octopus in his closet at his home and the octopus is telling him, and I, I, I can't tell that voice. I wanna say, I'll look it up later. I wanna say it's Kate Blanchett, but I, it may not be, it may be somebody else. The octopus is like, we should just go off and be together. So those are all the little stories. So all of that being said, that was a mouthful. That wasn't as quick as I thought it'd be because this so far as it's 18 minutes. Um, <laughs> I gotta give this opening back up a solid four. You're getting us right big into storylines. Lots of shocks. The telling the deep to blow a train. Um, the Zoe being, uh, you know, a, a soup and and just straight murdering. But there's a lot of just random stuff in here as well as nice little Easter eggs to things like I mentioned, both to pop culture and within the this universe that we've this world we've built out. So it's absolutely awesome to see. And I I gotta give Anthony who plays Stoneland, Anthony Starr, plays Homelander, so much credit. He has been killing this role already. I felt like he at least needed an, uh, an Emmy nomination or Golden Globe nomination um, as is, but now putting on this midlife crisis and finding that balance of still being this tyrant, but realizing that there is some humanity to it and that he is kind of falling apart and whatnot um, and in, in a different way. Um, it's just so interesting to see and how well this writing has been in order to get us to this spot, man. Um, I absolutely cannot wait for the next couple of episodes um I, I, based off of where we're going right now um we know that the virus isn't strong enough to kill homelander that was brought up in the conversation between um butcher and victoria but i think again with victoria's power she may be able to kill homelander at least hurt him but the problem is is like she's got to be able to see somebody in order to do it and like like that's why they're trying to take her eyes out maybe she can't blow him up and he's too durable who knows uh but we'll see how all of that goes 
and it is very clear that everybody is regretting a lot of their decisions and they're trying to figure out where to go next both the good the bad and the ugly everybody is fucking miserable and i think the one thing about that that i really enjoy is the fact that again when you look at society we're in a place in the world right now where it feels like everybody is really hurt where everybody's really sad where everybody's really angry it feels like the social contract i've talked about this before is starting to unravel and in doing so everybody's dealing with depression and anxiety and then they're just fighting for what they believe in whether it be right or wrong they're they're fully just like invested in it and i love again that you have taken this and not only are these characters all deep and they're all going through certain stuff no pun intended there but again you're holding up that mirror to society you're seeing really how we all feel we're all going through these struggles one way or the other and just trying to find love trying to love our loved ones trying to find safety and comfort that's 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 all what every single character is going through in this and to see each of them play out is absolutely fantastic so with that i want to know what you think did you like the first episode are you excited about where season four what the storylines have been set up so far please let me know down in the comments and if you haven't already again subscribe to the channel man hit that like button if you enjoyed kind of my breakdown and please be sure to hit the notification bell so you know when i put other stuff up. now like i said um two and three if i can get them done sooner than later i will otherwise expect them either friday or saturday and then i will be here each week they're only doing one episode a week from that point forward you'll have those all on time the next morning after the show comes out barring any sort of emergency or anything like that man so with that i'm gonna get out of here thank you so much for watching i'll see you on the next one man Peace.